The reaction that you're seeing is the oxidation of luminol. It's a chemiluminescent reaction. Chemiluminescence is when a chemical reaction generates light with little or no heat. So this is definitely different than combustion, which involves heat. Chemiluminescent substances are rare, but they tend to be familiar. For example, commercial products such as light sticks, emergency flares, and fishing lures often use a compound called sialum. In male fireflies, the interaction of luciferin with the enzyme luciferase, molecular oxygen, and ATP is used to produce light. Some deep sea organisms produce similar types of chemiluminescent compounds. When chemiluminescence occurs in a living organism, it's called bioluminescence, but it's the same process. Whenever an organic compound is either absorbing or giving off light, you are dealing with the electronic state of the molecule. When each electron has the smallest possible amount of energy, that's referred to as the ground state. Electrons in the ground state are in their smallest possible orbital, as close as they can comfortably get to the nucleus. If the right amount of energy is added to an electron, it can move to a larger orbital. In other words, the electron is a bit farther away from the nucleus. This is called an excited state. When an electron moves in the opposite direction from an excited state to a lower energy level, it releases energy. In a chemiluminescent reaction, that energy is emitted as light. It's possible to calculate the amount of energy being emitted by measuring the wavelength, meaning the color of light, because different colors of light have different energies associated with them. When luminol and other chemiluminescent compounds are produced, they contain excited electrons. When those compounds are reacted with an appropriate oxidizing agent, the electrons relax to a lower energy state, releasing energy in the form of light. Forensic investigators use luminol to detect trace amounts of blood at crime scenes because it reacts with the iron in hemoglobin to produce light. You are seeing a very short time window in which this luminol reaction is actually producing light. This is going to be the same during a forensic investigation, and that means that they need to be ready to take relevant photos as soon as they start using the luminol. But it's still a very powerful forensic tool because it's capable of detecting blood stains that were diluted up to 10 million times, and it does this without interfering with subsequent DNA testing. Biologists also use luminol in cellular assays to detect things like copper, iron, cyanide, as well as specific proteins in Western blotting. Now you are seeing four different colors here. The blue is oxidation of luminol with no additives. Other emissions, meaning other colors, can be observed with the addition of dyes. The green reaction has fluorescein dye added to the luminol. Orange has eosin Y disodium salt added to the luminol. Yellow has a mixture of both of those previous dyes, fluorescein and eosin Y disodium salt. Here's another video I think you'll like. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell. If you feel that I've earned it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.